Uh, hi everyone, my name is Christine Dillon, and today I'm going to teach you how to make your React applications even more awesome by incorporating user interface animations. Um, but before I teach you how to do that, I wanted to give you some context for why I chose this topic. So last week I decided that I was going to practice my newfound React skills by building an application from start to finish. And I built a to-do app because, you know, the world needs more to-do apps. And, you know, it's really basic. You can add items to the to-do list and you click the little box and the items go away. Just to give you some context of what you're looking at, uh, my app has two main smart components. You have the to-do list container, which is the big white box, and you have the add to-do list container, which is the form. And then you also have two dumb components, the to-do list component, which is just going to render all my list items, and the add to-do to -do component, which is rendering the text area and button on my form. Um, now, overall, I was really pleased with myself. This was the first thing I built in React from start to finish. However, it's a little boring, and I thought it might be missing something. And that thing <laughs> is animation, because, you know, it's 2017, and we don't want our apps to be static and just sit there. We want them to interact with us and give us visual feedback. So the big question is, though, how do I add animation to my React application? Now, if you're like me, you probably actually started by saying, how did I do it before? And if you're also like me, you probably thought, oh, jQuery. jQuery is how I animated things before, right? You know, you, you remember jQuery. You have selectors. You select item elements on the DOM. And then you use various methods, like fade in, fade out. And you can manipulate what the CSS looks like of that element. Can you use jQuery in React? Yes. But there is a catch. I have seen people use jQuery in their React applications, and mostly what I can tell is that they're incorporating it into the lifecycle methods, uh, component you know, will mount or component did unmount. Um, pretty much grab the element before it leaves the page, do something to it, and then leave the page. But there are some drawbacks to this. What are the problems with using jQuery in your React application? If you are trying to do it in these lifecycle methods, what if you're trying to animate a dumb component? You don't have lifecycle methods, so that doesn't really help you. The other big thing is that jQuery is directly manipulating the DOM. Now, if you remember, React, that's not how React works. React is relying on the virtual DOM to keep track of what the DOM should look like. Uh, when a component's props or state change, React will then decide whether or not the DOM uh, needs to be updated by comparing it to its virtual DOM. So you have to imagine that if you're using jQuery and you are directly doing something on the DOM, React does not know about that. React only writes to the DOM, it does not read from the DOM. So at some point, you might have a collision where what the DOM looks like and what your virtual DOM in React looks like don't match. And that is going to cause problems. And finally, people also say, why are you using such a large library like jQuery if all you want to do is animate one or two things? It's going to take up a lot of space in your application that you probably don't need. So the other thought is, hmm, maybe if I don't use jQuery, can I just hard code all that CSS transition manipulation into my component? Yes, you can. But remember, jQuery, what it was doing was making that vanilla JavaScript easier for you. So now you're just going to have to write all the vanilla JavaScript, and it's going to clog up your component. It's not going to be easy to follow. So as you can probably guess, this is not easy, right? It's a little tricky. So how do we actually add animations to our React components? Well, the people at Facebook realized that this was hard, and they actually decided to make it easier for us by giving us something called the React CSS Transition Group. And that is a special add-on component that you can use in your application. And the way it works, in short, is that anything that you nest inside the React CSS Transition Group is going to be animated. And the React CSS Transition Group does that for you. So this is what it looks like when I incorporated it into my uh, little app. Ooh, look at that. Now everything is fading in. Isn't that so much more exciting than just randomly appearing? And then I click and they fade away. So to show you the code, this is what the render section of my to-do list container, the smart component, looked like. You can see it's rendering the dumb to-do component. And this is how you add the React CSS transition group. So first, obviously, you have to import it into your file. And then the first step is to wrap whatever you want to animate in the opening and closing tags. After you do that, you also have to give the transition a name. I decided to call it cool list item, though some people would probably choose something a little more descriptive like fade or spin or something that corresponds to the actual transition that you're doing. And then you also have to uh, configure the React CSS transition group. So two things that you have to put here, transition enter timeout and transition leave timeout. This is essentially telling 
the React CSS transition group component. This is how long you should wait while the transition is running as the element enters the page. And this is how long you need to wait before you pull that element from the page, how long the transition is going to run before you can pull it. So what this is going to do is the React CSS transition group is going to automatically apply certain CSS classes for you to your element that correspond to the transition that you want to run. And as you can see here, this is what my CSS looks like. You have that React CSS transition group name, cool list item, and then you have to apply two classes for enter and two classes that correspond to when it leaves the DOM. So the enter and enter active, you can see I'm applying uh, the opacity for fade in sort of transition. And then the leave and leave active are what is going to happen where I'm removing the, you know, the opacity to remove it from the DOM. Um, and to show you this, this is a little tricky to see at like full speed. This is my app, very, very slow. And this is the dev tools. So you can see that those class items, CSS classes, are being added for a brief period of time and then removed. And the React CSS transition group is doing this entirely for me. I don't have to do anything. It's so much simpler. But wait, what if you want to do more than just like a CSS transition, like fade in or fade out? Well, there's third party libraries for that. So these are just a few things that I wanted to suggest. I didn't actually get to play with them last week, but maybe as you're building your own applications, you want to try them out. Say you're building a list and you want it to be drag and droppable, or you have a grid of items that you want to be drag and droppable. You can use something like React Sortable. Or if you're feeling really ambitious, you can do things with React Motion. React Motion is really cool. It was actually built by, I think, a former intern uh, at Facebook who was part of the React team. And what he wanted to do was create you know, very fluid motion type uh, components. And so what you get with React Motion is you get three separate components called motion, staggered motion, and transition motion. Uh, they each do something a little different. And these are just examples of things that I found online that people built with this library. And finally, if you are looking for inspiration, I would suggest looking at react.rocks. It's kind of like a Pinterest page for React projects. Um, and I just searched by animation here. Uh, the great thing about this is you, know, you could even post projects there if you wanted to after you build something really cool. And it gives you links to both play with the application that this person built and to see their GitHub you know, files so you can see how they built it and what tools they used to build it. So in summary, if you're going to do a basic animation or transition from like CSS, just use the React CSS transition group. Do not mess with jQuery. Do not touch the DOM. If you want to do something more advanced, definitely check out uh, third-party libraries. I would also say if uh, you are thinking, wow, I really miss like putting accordion menus in my applications and drop-down nav bars, I guarantee you someone has probably built it. And you can find it and add it. Or you can try and build it yourself. Thank you.